everybody, welcome back to Das Gut Vape. I kind of have a double review, more of an introduction to one product and a review of another one. Um, I know a lot of people have been talking about this brand new Aspire Atlantis tank, which is a sub-ohm uh, tank, and it so far has been impressing me quite a bit. But uh, what we're going to be really doing the review on is the Segeli 30 watt device. Um, the Segeli 30 watt device does use a Yihi uh, DC to DC converter. I will be getting a little bit more into some of the more technical details on the Yihi chip and what the Segeli offers for options. So yeah, um, I've been pretty happy with it so far as the device and then with the combo of Aspire Atlantis. Um, I know a lot of people have been talking about this Atlantis tank. I used it a couple of times with a buddy of mine. I've had this one now for about two weeks now. And I've been actually fairly impressed for a tank style sub ohm system. I mean, not a lot of tanks can produce the amount of vapor and the taste that this thing can. Um, I do have a couple of other things coming that are, are following suit with what Aspire has come up with. So far, it's, it's been, been really surprising. Um, I've used quite a bit of the other Aspire products like the Nautilus, the Nautilus Mini. Um, those are two of the major tanks and the flavor out of those along with the vapor production for that style tank have been just out of this world. So jumping into a sub-ohm tank, you don't have to deal with the dripping and driving problem. A lot of people, guys, don't drip and drive. That's dangerous as hell. That's, that's probably way more dangerous than answering your phone in your car. I mean, here we have it. This is Segeli 30 watt in black with engraving on it. The device is currently reading the Aspire Nautilus at 0.6 ohms. I will be putting this on my ohms reader to give you an idea of, of a little bit more accurate on what it is actually coming up with. So stay tuned guys, let's have a little vape. So here we have the box that I received my Segeli 30 watt or 30W. I did order this one in black with the engravings. Um, really decent box, I mean nothing too crazy. Like I said previously in a bunch of my other videos, we don't buy these devices for the containers they're in. Um, it is definitely a perk or a plus when you receive more of a display case style um, box to store the device in, which it, it, it is nice to have, but in most cases you never need it. So anyway, this is the box I received it in. Very simple, little Segeli here. Nice thumb spot so you can open the box easily. The QR code along with the www.segeli.com. And let's see, a lot of the same on the other side of the box. Bottom, nothing too crazy. Just the made in China. And we've got a bunch of the information here on the side. So, why don't we open this up and see what we got inside. All right. So what we have inside is your user manual. Breaks down how the device operates, what its operating range is, and also breaks down a few of the other things. Now I know this device um, is noted to have a gravity sensor for adjustment and menu navigation, which is kind of neat. So you don't have to have two other switches or some other way of either going and advancing in your menus. Um, it's all done off of a simple tip. So you can just tip it to left, to the right, and it will navigate that way. The operating wattage range of this device, this is a variable wattage device, and it will operate from 7 watts to 30 watts, or it will fire 3 volts all the way up to 8.5 volts off of a single 18650 battery that are capable of delivering or supplying a large amount of current. It will also fire an atomizer as low as 0.5 ohms all the way up to 3 ohms, so it gives you a very wide operating range of resistance. The battery voltage range, so it has a, uh, a dual meter, so it'll tell you the um, amount of voltage that's left in your battery. Also has some warning here. For any reason, the, the body or the aluminum body of the tube device starts to get warm. They just, they highly recommend that you 
discontinue use for a, a period of time so that you don't overheat your battery. Now they do break down a few of the other things in here. They have a visualization system, variable voltage, variable wattage mod. It's really just a variable wattage mod. I'm not really sure why they break it down to variable voltage. Um, they do display the voltage that will be supplied to the atomizer and I think that's where they're coming up with that but it is generally just a variable wattage device and like I said before 7 watts to 30 watts of capable power to fire a half ohm on the low range to a 3 ohm on the high range atomizer. Um, it does have a few other things in here for um, menu features it has low resistance protection, high input voltage warning, output short protection. So if you have an atomizer on here like you're using a dripper and it's below the operating range, it will give you a shorted reading. And then it also does have an open circuit protection. So it won't fire the device if it senses that there is no resistance or no atomizer attached to it. And another very good thing that it does have is a reverse battery protection. So anybody who accidentally puts their battery in backwards, it won't blow up your device. This is a good thing for anybody who, who may accidentally do that. Um, they break down the, the error codes. So for low resistance, it'll just say low res. For low battery, it'll display low battery voltage. And that cutoff point, again, is at 3.2 volts. If you have a high input voltage higher than 5 volts, it will display capital H's. So that's good information to have. Um, and then the rest of this breaks down how, the, how to turn the device on, how to deactivate the device, and then also how to navigate the menu system. It is a very easy device to use, so there's really no worry. Um, anybody who will have this device won't be, won't be overloaded with complexity of operation. Next, we should probably get the, de the device out, and here you have it. Um, it is nicely packed in foam along with the cardboard box, and it did come in a plastic sleeve to keep it nice and clean, no dust. So, we will take it out, and here you have the beautiful Segeli 30 watt tube mod device, variable wattage of course. I will break this down also into a few pieces, so we will get rid of a bunch of this stuff, and then I will come back and show you how to take the device apart, put it back together in its individual pieces, and then explain what some of these pieces do. So again, here we have the device itself. Um, it does come in a few pieces. You have your bottom cap, which just unthreads. It also does have a bit of a locking ring um, and some adjustment. This bottom button is threaded, and that's to take up battery rattle itself. And I will pull this completely out to show you. Very fine threads. So this is just the button. It's not the firing button, but it is just to adjust for battery rattle so that Every battery I have tried in here has fit and has fit very nicely. Again, we have the bottom piece. It's a little dirty. I have been using it. Um, they do have battery venting holes here, which is an absolute must for safety. Any company who does not incorporate battery venting, if in case something does bad happen, you don't want it to turn into a pipe bomb. There is a threaded collar on here. Um, as of right now, I can't get it off. It's just more for aesthetic purposes, um, but you can also thread it down and it kind of locks that button up a little bit tighter. It's easier to do on the device. And just a simple view of the inside of this bottom. And then we will thread this back on. Like I said, it's very fine threads, which is great. So now we'll set this down. Next portion we have is the battery tube. Um, it's fairly heavy. I believe it's stainless steel. I believe it's just powder coated. So you'll see the engravings here that say Segeli 30W or 30 watt. Very nice threads. The machining is pretty good. Um, haven't had any problems with it. Everything threads together beautifully. Does not get sloppy. I have not had any problems with the threads whatsoever on this device. 
it does have a little bit of weight to it, but not bad. So we'll set that off to the side. Now here's where we get to the fun stuff. We have this center piece right here, which I will leave towards the end for a little bit of discussion on what this is. So on the top, we have your 510, and this is a reverse threaded adjustable center pin. Right, here we go. It's a reverse threaded center pin so that you can adjust any of your atomizers to sit nicely and flush to the top of this. Also, for the people who like to still use the Ego style threading, as always, Segeli is very good about incorporating the Ego threads, and they are very nice. Haven't had any problems with the 510 or the Ego, and they work well. So, now to the main workhorse portion of this device. This is the actual control head. Um, like a lot of the other devices out there, they have replacement heads or you can just take them down to this point. This is the positive pin where your battery would contact. It is slightly floating, which is a big thing that I'm happy to see that Segeli is op or offering that this is a little bit of a floating, not spring-loaded, I don't think, but it has a little bit of a movement to it, which is something that um, one of their previous devices that I own that I've had issues with in the past with the button pushing up too far and not being able to use certain batteries on it. But that's the control head. No other buttons other than the firing button itself, which is right here. And you have a very nice, very easy to see, it's OLED screen. So we'll put this all back together and then I will put a battery in it and show you a bit about the menu system. So I have a Sony VTC5 here that I will be using for this device, and I do highly suggest or recommend that you use high drain batteries for these high wattage devices. The reason why I suggest you use the high drain batteries is because of the amperage that you are demanding from the battery itself. You'll get current limited or it'll keep popping up saying check battery, check battery. Um, and that's one of those things that you, when your battery starts running low, then you have to drop your wattage slightly down to use up the rest of the battery. But anyway, let's put the battery inside. And the way that I like doing this is I separate it at the bottom of the control head. I drop the battery inside the tube. I carefully thread it back on. And I tend to get a little bit of a gap here, so to pick up that gap, you just unthread the bottom a little bit, tighten that down. Nice thing is they have beautiful, perfect threads on here. So the Segeli lines up with the button and the bottom of the engraving on this tube, or the top, I should say, just lines up with the engraving on the tube. Then you just snug this up. You don't want to over tighten it because you'll be pushing up too much on the device or on the center contact and that can cause problems eventually down the road. To use this device, it is simple. You just do one, two, three, four, five clicks. That starts the device up and activates it. As you can see, they are using the Yihi SX300 chip. And here we have it. So currently, since I do not have an atomizer on here, it will just go to its default setting of 2.5 ohms. It's it basically it's seeing no resistance. I don't understand why it just doesn't say no addy, no or no no atomizer or something like that. But let's get into the menu system a little bit. So it's one, two, three, four, five to get into system. And because this does have the tip switch or a a gravity switch, let's see if I can get a good view of the screen. It is a very bright screen. Um, so here you have your system, and it says system on. To navigate, you just tip. Okay, so if you tip that one way, that shuts down the device. So if you do one, two, three, four, five again, it starts the, the, the device back up. I wish I could get that better. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now I actually hit six. 
So now, let's see, exit system. If I tip this way, nothing happens. If I tip that way, it goes into shutdown mode. If I hit it again, now that takes me into my variable wattage setting. And you can go all the way down to, and it does gradually pick up speed. It's not instantaneous, but it does step up at speed. It does not round robin, so you don't have to worry about it just going back over. You can tip it either way, so it stops at 7 watts. And <clears throat> 20 watts. And goes all the way up to 30 watts. Um, I like running the Atlantis tank on about 25 watts, which gives me about 4 volts, maybe a little under 4 volts, so I will back that down. Actually, we'll do 26 watts. I think 26 to 27 watts is where I've been running it. So 26.5, perfect. Now to lock that in, tap the button once, your fire button once, and... All you have to do now is when you're ready to exit, you just click over to exit and tip it either right or left, does not matter. Now you're ready to put an atomizer on top. So here I have the, the Aspire Atlantis filled with some delicious cosmic fog nuts and it is coming up with a 0.52 ohms. So about a half an ohm. So we're actually above what the device low resistance is at. So if you just tap the button once, then you will see that it'll come up on the bottom. Here you have 0.6 ohms. And there's a, probably just a little bit of resistance through that pin, so not too bad. Up here you have your voltage that will be going to the atomizer itself. So in this case, it is 3.98 volts. And then you have your battery meter here, along with the voltage, the battery that you have your 18650's battery voltage is. So this is a 4.1718. It's bouncing around a little bit. That is one of the things that I do have a little bit of a issues with in here. The bottom screw, and it's going to be really hard to show this up close, but the bottom screw, or the, th the adjustment, does create issues where there's a little bit of resistance. I wish this was, it had a copper pin, or was some, like, I think with the copper version of this one might not have this problem, but I think the connections could be a little bit better throughout this device. I don't always have problems with it. In fact, it doesn't usually trouble me too much. I just kind of give this thumb screw just a little bit of a turn, and it's good to go. So here what we'll do is I'll give you a display of the screen, and it's firing. Now you'll kind of see the voltage drop, too, on this device. And it does do quite a voltage drop according to the chip. So I'm going to take a quick vape. And the vapor off of this tank is phenomenal. In fact, I'm going to open up the airway on it just a little bit. Actually, I'll take it wide open. And that is, the flavor out of that tank is amazing, guys, by the way. By the way. So what I'll do is I'll go back into FaceTime mode. And I'll just give you kind of my, my, my final words on this device. Man, the, this tank just gives me so much flavor. I, I almost dare to say it, almost too much flavor. I mean, it's to the point where with some of the really thin juices, I really wouldn't suggest to use the, the really thin juices on this thing because it leaves a, like a, a very, very thick coating 
a flavor throughout your whole mouth. So really strong fluids probably wouldn't be, uh, in my personal opinion, wouldn't be something I'd use in here a lot. And this, um, this Cosmic Fog, this Cosmic Fog Nuts does have a very, very good taste. So um, I am currently firing this uh, Aspire Atlantis tank um, at 3.98 volts or 26.5 watts. Um, I have run it all the way up to 30. In fact, I will do that now. And we will go into watts. I should probably show this on screen. Let's make sure I'm going to tip the right way. So I need to tip this way. And we'll take that all the way to the top of its operating range. 28. It's hard to do this with it facing away from me. 29.8. 30. Okay. And exit. So that will fire these, this atomizer up to 4.24 volts with a grand total of 30 watts. And it just so happens that the Segeli 30 watt is seeing this as a 0.6 ohm atomizer. So we'll fire it. Yeah, man, it does, this thing does throw a pretty good kick of, of power right off the get-go. It's like instantaneous power, so. No loss of flavor. I'm more of a, a warm to slightly hot with lots of airflow type of vapor myself. Um, this atomizer does offer some resistance. Um, and I won't be getting into this atomizer 100% because I would like to spend a little more time with it. Get a couple of coils for it. Try it out. One thing worth noting too about the Aspire Atlantis tank, it does not hold a lot of juice. I mean, it holds a fair amount of juice, but it doesn't hold a ton of juice. Um, meaning this thing burns through juice like crazy. So if you're one of those people that buys a 15 mil bottle, a 10 mil bottle of juice, You'll go through that in a day. If you don't vape a lot, maybe two days. But I have found that that thing just, this thing just eats fluid. But and that's mainly because it is supplying such a, a massive amount of flavor and a large amount of vapor. Um, it does have a little bit of resistance even on the high, on the maximum airflow. Uh, this does have four settings. Um, and I will give more information on that when I do the full review on the Atlantis tank. But yeah, the Segeli 30 watt is, is a very versatile, versatile, versatile um, variable wattage mod. I find 30 watts to be pretty decent. Um, you can put any style tank on this and usually, um, like with any of the pro tanks, the aero tanks, those type of tanks, I don't usually run them any higher than 12 watts personally um, because I have a hard time with the thicker juices keeping, the coil has a harder time keeping up with it. The Nautilus Mini, those uh, keep up with the fluid much better and you can usually run those, in my case, about 15 watts. I don't like to run them any higher than 18 max just because you tend to burn off that fluid pretty quick on that coil and it doesn't quite wick up the type of juice that I use. Kind of get into a chain vape and you might get a dry hit. It doesn't happen very often. If you stay below like about 10 watts, you're going to be able to chain vape that all day long and probably not get a dry hit. At least I haven't. So we'll have a good vape here. And the vapor, man, the vapor and the flavor that this tank puts out is phenomenal. So the Segeli 30 watt, ladies and gentlemen, um, I give this a big two thumbs up from Das Gut Vape. I am Justin, and thank you for watching. Let's have a good vape here.